uh, talk called Skip Tonight Activism and People in the Choir, and it is the wonderful Susan Gerbic. I normally start 
collection because it's so important that people are able to go to the internet, they're going to type in the word, and they're going to get what? We could keep a page, right? That's almost the first thing you're going to get. And something like homeopathy, we have to have that in really great shape. Right there, smack dab in the beginning, they need to understand what homeopathy is all about. Any guests out there, how many kids, maybe homeopathy kids? Millions. Okay, so last year, the homeopathy page, in English only, received 1,335,600 views. That's one language, it's English, obviously it's a more popular one. This is my slide on homeopathy. Um, what I'm going to talk about next, <laughs> keep staring at it, there might be something up here in a minute, but since I'm not talking about homeopathy, I'm going to be talking about a, um, and I have to be very careful that I don't like it myself, um, I'm going to be talking about a case that we have worked on little bits here and there, and you UK people, oh man, you guys were on this way before we were, and I'm so proud of you guys to be to have done this and made, me, uh, made our team um, uh, be able to have something to just sneak our teeth into right away. But this is a cancer doctor in Texas, and if you don't know who the Brzezinski Clinic is, then you are not paying attention, because we are all over the place in social media and so on with uh, Clinic. So um, there's a really great Wikipedia page. You can read all about it. So all the examples I'm going to give you are going to go by kind of quickly. It's a little movie. And so don't expect to sit there and read what is going on on the page. This is not a reading thing. It's just to give you a basis of what it is we have done, what we're doing, and I'm really looking forward to the QA. I'm much more comfortable with questions after the QA. But um, all these pages that I'm using as examples, they should hit home. You guys should know these people. So, here we go. First page is the Brzezinski Clinic. I uh, have had a few people that have helped me with this, this clinic page. Uh, there is a lead that is not a scientific, uh, you know, there's no way of making this work. Here's the page. We have lots of primary sources and secondary sources, which would be completely ruled by the uh, Secondary sources. USA Today investigation came out a few months ago. That's a huge deal. Uh, it's the biggest newspaper in America, USA Today. And um, once it hit, we had we knew it was going to hit. I knew, and so we made sure that the Wikipedia page was written in uh, English in great shape when that happened. And you'll see down here that there's an awful lot of references for anybody to uh, go to the Wikipedia page and, and as well, we have the, the patient groups. We have their site and our site. We have to be very careful to be very neutral. And you'll see on this page, we've also changed, translated the page into German and other languages. This is Portuguese I'm really, really looking at right now. And these are our uh, Wikipedia stats. So we can see that generally people are hitting about 200 views a day, something like that. That's what people are hitting. And now, after the USA Today article came out, here we go. So we're up into the, the big numbers, the thousands. So when the article came out, people went, what's this? And they're going to Wikipedia because that's where they're going to get their information. USA Today, Today, USA Today did a really good job explaining everything, so we, we didn't actually expect these numbers to be that high. This last uh, slide I was showing you is a FAQ page for the, one of the biggest supporters of, of um, the Brzezinski Clinic. And he says that we, uh, we should just take the page down, we could keep the page down, because we're not allowing this, the skeptics are not allowing the, their whatever to go and uh, put up on the Wikipedia page. And that, you know, basically they farm on, you know. So, we have an agenda, we're, we have a multi-billion dollar industry, we'd rather have people have cancer and all that kind of stuff because we're, you know. So we pretty much just got to lectures and he, he talks about the Wikipedia people. I'm on, I guess, on a list or something now because they've been going out. I've been involved in the Brzezinski Clinic um, thing for about almost a little over a year now, a little, a little over. I was really upset about uh, this medical clinic with, okay, uh, but, you know, with cancer, it's a cancer clinic, and so it's called, he uses something called anti-neoplastines, it's like a urine-based something, 
And um, I, I said, no, we're not going to take care of that. That's, that's just not going to happen. We, we can't have it. So we have people who are going to the Wikipedia pages. We don't know exactly how long they're on the Wikipedia page. We don't know if they're reading the whole thing. It's a uh, the same person's going over and over. But we do know how many people are hitting the page. And with Brzezinski, what we want to do is we want to make sure that people are yeah, really good, neutral evidence, citations, and then if people are interested, they can go to the bottom and read all the rest of the citations and be able to, um, you know, follow up, go to our skeptical go to people's pages and read the blogs, read the, the, the really well done stuff. Because of course, the Wikipedia page is just supposed to be an overview. So um, we don't know how many people have come to the Brzezinski page and turned around and left. But we know there's got to be some because it just has to. 175,000 people viewed the Wikipedia page for Brzezinski last year. That's 2013. So we know that people came in, looked at it, turned around and left, and did not um, go to uh, Brzezinski for that. They might have taken on homeopathy. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know what they did. So do you all like use Wikipedia? Is there anybody who doesn't use Wikipedia? Okay. Have you guys used it in like the last Last week? Yeah. How about today? Yeah. Fantastic. Did anybody look up any of the speakers on Wikipedia prior to the conference? So you, it was very quick. It's really quick. It's like, yes. Okay, well, I hope you found what you liked because almost all the speakers we have rewritten their pages or looked at them and tried to make sure they were in really great shape. There's a few that we skipped because um, we didn't really skip them, but there's a couple pages that are like, like ready to be done and we couldn't get them out in time. So maybe we sit sick or something like that. Okay, so this is my most popular project in the Wikipedia world. It's called We Got to Wiki Back. And my idea is, is that when I'm not a scientist, I'm a baby photographer. So I do no skill in, in technology or anything of the sort. So what, what I wanted to get back to Skepticism. I've been involved in this for many years, and it's my time. You know, I just you guys sit in the audience. It's like, get your fed up, Susan. You gotta find some project, and this is my project. So, what I decided is, I want to support the people who are doing all the work from behind the scenes, kind of thing. I, I wanted to make sure that when somebody was in the news, that damn well better have a good page. And it would shame on us if we're allowing the crap out there on. Wikipedia, which everybody's going to, to find out about our spokespeople. These are our people. And if we don't have their backs, nobody's going to have their backs. So it's extremely important that we have this well-written, well-cited photos. And we want the people to look human. We don't want to look like they're, you know, they're born somewhere and all of a sudden they have a PhD. We want them to, we want to show that they have personality. They, they have uh, maybe, you know, the same kinds of things that people in, that are reading it can identify them. We want to show that they came from someplace nowhere. You know, it's just, they're not all born in Cambridge or something like that to professor parents. Okay, so here's a few, uh, I'm going to show you. This is Mercy Science Skeptic Society. I think you've heard of it. This is the page they had before we became involved. And it's going to go through here really quick. And there are references. I am so thrilled. There was 13 references. And you can see this is basically what the page looked like before I, um, our team got involved. So one of my editors named Bill, he took this on months ago. So now this is the current Mercy Society Skeptic Society. You guys can all look this up later on your phone. But um, tablets, look at what we've got. We've got uh, Skeptics in the pub over here, and then there's a big old thing on homeopathy. I love this photo. When we were looking for photos to put up on the page, I said, this going on. I love psychic surgery. It's just, I love that stuff. So we have the skeptics with a K. By the way, I need to meet all the skeptics with a K, guys. I have to take a picture with you for my friend who just loves you. So I don't leave um, without taking the photo for me. Richard Dawkins, I have that put on the page also to give more, more uh, oomph to, to skepticism. Now look at the citations. He had, what, 17 before? We're still going. 45 citations. This is a strong, healthy page. Anybody, anywhere who hears about um, versus side skeptics is going to look at this and go, damn, 
you know, this is good. This is not something we crap. Here, and we have photographers here. We have some photographers here that have taken a lot of these photos. So I wanted you to look and see if maybe you might be in this photo from last year. That might be kind of fun. You never know. So um, we have, um, I have people who work with us that they basically just take photographs and do different other kinds of things for us. <clears throat> I might know Chris French. This is very embarrassing. This page was flagged in November of 2011, January 2011. How embarrassing. We left this up there. Not even a photo. I mean, that's really bad. He's got text on here, which is better than a lot of people's pages I've seen in the past. But what do we have? Five references? Five references for Chris French? Give me a freaking break. I mean, seriously. We should be embarrassed of ourselves that we've allowed this to happen for so long. Here it is now. Look at the difference. And there he is at the University Science Skeptic Society, Skeptics in the Pub event, which is all linkable to all the stuff that, that you guys are all doing. Um, here he's at the conference in Berlin. <clears throat> and so on. There's, if you will read it when you have time, you'll find this should be an interesting page that people will, will come to and say, Oh wow, you know, I have no idea. Look at now we're at 24 cit 24 citations. Huge difference. Okay, this was a fun one. I'm gonna give you a little preview. So I said to my team, we're gonna do all the Wikipedia pages we can for all the speakers that are gonna be at QED. So they're like, okay, okay, all right, all right. So they kept adding speakers. And we're like, wait, you know, heads up, we we gotta we need time, you know, these take these three rides can take a month or more to do. And um, this person, I think, was added late. And so I gave it to, I don't assign pages except to people who are new. I make them, I assign them a page. So I assigned this page to a very uh, timid editor. He called himself a timid editor. Timid. He called himself a timid er editor. And uh, his, his name is uh, Chris Allen. No, no. Yeah, Chris Allen. And so he had been editing with the people, like music pages and doing little bits of things on these. And so he came and he said, I'm ready to get a little more aggressive and, and do some more stuff. And, and you'll show me how. I said, yeah, I want you to do Nathan Phelps' page. <laughs> and um, he didn't know really much about that. And uh, that was really kind of fun because he's, we have a form. It's a secret form. You can't come to it unless you're in the group. And we train, we mentor, we, we I uh, do all that kind of stuff there. I do most of the training. So here we are back and forth. Nathan Phelps says, Nathan Phelps out. Oh, take this out. Add this in. We want more criticism. Find some more criticism. Da, da, da. You know, we're going back and forth. Where are we going to get a photo? We need a better photo. And so I'm at midnight one night, a month or so ago, I'm just like scrolling through my Facebook feed, which is not a common thing for me to do, actually. And I saw a post by Nathan Phelps, and it was his dad from Westbrook Baptist Church was on his deathbed, he didn't put it to hospice. I think you guys all remember that, right? Well, to you all, you're like, whoa, you know? To me, it's like, oh my god, this is gonna be massive. Oh my gosh, we have this page, and it's almost done. So here I am on my phone, publish, publish, publish. So he got a hold of somebody. So I'm looking at my phone to see who's awake next, and it's somebody in the UK, Ryan Harding, and he got a hold of some people on the end, and he's like, you got to get published now. He didn't know much more than his dad would take hospice. Because here's what happens. Once the page is published, now this is Nathan Phelps' page, we want to be ready for the media whenever it happens. And this is a, a, an old version of the page, February. Not the greatest photo, but I have photographers here now. We're going to take care of that. And we published this certain thing. Um, and like personal life, ooh, three sentences, uh, seven references, and that's about it. And this is actually one of our better pages that you will find on Wikipedia for, for uh, our skeptical spokespeople. So now this is what he did. He was said he published it. So I was so nervous. <laughs> it was so nervous. Said, that's, that's what it feels like to have the power that you were actually doing something important. So that's what it is. We have a criticism section there. All everything is noted. Everything's great. Um, we try to have them be as neutral as possible. Look at all those records. 31. Now he's looking pretty damn good, huh? So he said, let's go to his dad's page and start putting some, making sure that Nathan's mentioned on Fred's page. Because everybody's going to go to uh, Fred's page, right? So we go in and look at all these references to, we have a whole section for Nathan Phelps. People looking at 
uh, Frank Phelps' page are going to say, oh, what's this Nathan Phelps? Check it out. And there is this beautifully written article. So then we went to Westboro Baptist Church page. Now this is all, remember, a week or two before he dies. So uh, here's Nathan mentioned all over the page again. And we did this on purpose to make sure that it's like a link club. People will go from place to place. Now here's some stats. Oh, and I also, we have him at Metha mentioned on the Westboro Baptist page. You see it right there. We wrote him at Metha's page also. But I love having him on the Westboro Baptist page. Then we're going up here to Wikipedia's stats. Again, this only shows us how many people view the page. We don't know how long they stay on the page. And here's the stats we're reading for Nathan Felt. Um, we're into the, what was it, 76,000 times reviewed. Just look at these hits. He normally viewed uh, 100 views a day. So he was normally getting 100 views a day. And then he announces that his, his father had died. Everybody goes to Wikipedia. They go to the page. They find Nathan. And then he di actually dies. 13,000 people view Nathan Phelps' page because we put a direct link. Well, actually, 77,000 people. 70, I can't read this here. 76,000 people viewed the page because we were linking over. Because normally only 100 people would view the page a day. And then you can see it's been pretty consistent. consistent. It's been pretty steady since for, so for the first few days of April. And here's Fred Phelps' page. Um, all the time he was in the media, he was uh, one of the highest traffic pages in Wikipedia. 618,000 people viewed Fred Phelps' page. That's why we had to get it published. The Fred's page would lead over to uh, Nathan's page. And you'll see one more, one more stat here, and that is the, the stats for the Westboro Baptist Church. The same thing, 210,000 people. Page during that month. And that's phenomenal. There's no way you can write a blog or do a podcast or do anything that's going to reach this number of people. So while my editors and myself, we're, we're just like somebody in the background, somebody who wrote your dictionary, somebody who's you know, doing the prep work in the kitchen in the bathroom, nobody knows us. But what we're doing is so important. It's, it is so important because we're affecting so many people. We're people who Look at our edits. Millions of people look at what we write. And, it, and it's influencing the world. Hey, Lawrence Krauss. I put this on here, Leon, and it's still here in the team. There he is. He, he wrote this page in um, Dutch for us. So it's written well in English. So look at the difference. Here it is in Dutch. And um, he put this up just in time for Lawrence, Lawrence Krauss to appear in, what's the city? Belgium, yeah, he, he just, and so he went over to him at the table. Hi, Lawrence Krauss, I know that we're tripping at the age in Dutch. And Lawrence Krauss went, okay. <laughs> so, but, you know, we become a man of these people. They become part of us. And it's just, I can't, you can't look at this. But now, you can see he's, he's got some major publicity. Okay, here's, I'm, I'm getting close to being done here. So here's another one. I think maybe you've seen this name. And uh, one of my editors said, oh, she's going to be speaking in town. I'll, I'll take that page. She realized, he realized, his name is uh, Richard McDonald of this, uh, these two pages, that her mother is also very prominent, a major mathematician, writes mystery novels. And he said, let's do a mother-daughter page release at the same time. And he sure did. He went, he wrote the mother and the daughter's page. And that was just so cool. I don't think anybody else has ever done anything like that. As Richard McDonald did that. Um, I have, uh, it's great. And so, um, now they have personality. They have respect. They have, they have their backs. They feel like, you know, they can go and do their, their job and somebody's cares, you know? That's basically what it comes down to. Robert Lovella, his page is in great shape. I just wanted to be able to say, I know Robert Lovella, that's so cool. Uh, we were raised on Red Dwarf. I just love Red Dwarf. But I just want to mention that what we can do is we have these things called, ah, oh, look at that, Mercy Side Skeptics. Do you see that? A nice hyperlink to the Mercy Side Skeptics uh, Wikipedia page. When Robert McMillan is on the media or doing something that has nothing to do with skepticism, people are going to go to his Wikipedia page and they're going to find scientific skeptics. There's even a mention of a citation for Mercy Side Skeptics in there. They're going to find Robert McMillan's um, um, other interests, the skepticism thing. What the heck is the skepticism thing? Let me look at that. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Oh, we have conferences? Oh, look, that's in the 19th. 
mom, you know, just a sidestep thing, I know where that is, is we have to be creative and put ourselves out there. And we've done this with lots of pages, not just Robert Llewellyn. We, we do it with a lot, but I thought I'd use him as an example. Um, a couple more. This page, look at this. This is called a no scroller. I made up that term. The page is so long, you do not have to scroll to see the whole page. That was it. So I need a better picture of a um, photographer, so I need a better picture of Mark here today. This is a project that one of my editors thought of uh, that he heard about. It is audio that we can record, and we put it on the Wikipedia page to give the page even more personality. And Mark went and did this for us, and he was hilarious. Oh my gosh, I didn't know him before. And you know, when the page is almost done, we ask people, hey, you have some photos you could upload, because we can't upload them, can we get some audio from you? And they said, you know, it's like, okay, but you wouldn't put it, it's hilarious. So when you're not on your cell phones, because you're not going to probably get this, this audio, please go in and listen to this, uh, to this audio. So we have a new project, it's like, I have projects in the network. What we're trying to do is get all the audio of voice intro for all the people who have Wikipedia pages and all the people who are about to have a Wikipedia page. So I need to talk to you if you're one of them. And if you're not, please bug whoever you see here. I mean, I need to get, obviously, Nathan Phelps and, and Robert Wellens and on and on and on. So I need your audio because it just makes the page much more personal. And then, here's another one. This is done in minutes. I love it. My editor, Christina, Christina, um, uh, daily, she did this page, and she she's like, I don't know if there's a lot on her on the internet. So here's what is there: three three citations. I mean, come on, this is a respected speaker. She was done. She was so awesome. This is something just finished training with us. Look what she did. And we go back and forth and we discuss this. We say, should we put this in? Should we take this out? Will we take this in? No, no, bad this more. Isn't that look beautiful? I mean, it, I'm so impressed with the work that they're able to do. Okay, so this is pretty much the last part. This will take about five minutes or so, so since I can't see the time, I'm just gonna assume I'm doing okay. Jerry Andrus. Any Jerry Andrus fans out there? There's one, of course, in the market, which is what I'm talking about. So this is one of these people, not only do, I'm a history major. I don't work in history or have anything to do with history other than creating history, as I live each day, but um, I, I have to start with something, because when I try to start with the term evolution, and I wanted it written in all languages, because there are some pages that you will look at in other languages, and evolution is a horrible shape. I mean, two or three sentences in some of these languages, that's all it is on, on evolution. I said, that's really embarrassing. So what we should do is we should, we should start with a page, and people are like, no, I don't think of evolution, I don't understand all that terminology, I'm not a scientist. I said, you know, I don't know, so I don't know. So I decided, since I'm in charge, I picked Jerry Andrews. This is a man I actually knew. He died in 2007. He's a dear friend of James Randi and uh, Ray Hyman. He also has been at many conferences. He's a, he invents optical illusions. I wanted to start with Jerry because, well, first off, we need to preserve our history. Nobody was taking notes and taking photos and stuff back in the days when there, were, there was pre-internet and pre-all that other stuff. So we need to preserve our history. So we have to step back and make sure we're taking care of that too. So um, Jerry Andrus is an inventor, as I said. He uh, creates all his opt optical illusions himself. And um, because of that, it's, it's, he's kind of made other people you know, spread out. He's also a close magician. And we felt that, well, I felt that it was important to start with Jerry. So I went and it took me a while, but I got all the information I could, and I did a uh, Wikipedia page for him. He already had one, but you'll see it. It's not that great. I rewrote the Wikipedia page in English, and then my team came in and rewrote the page in each language, and I'll show you that really quickly. So this is Jerry Adams, and I think you might add, well, the other reason why we picked, I picked Jerry Adams because no matter what language you view his videos in that we have on here, you'll understand it. Somebody in any country will be able to understand an optical illusion. There shouldn't be any problem with translations or anything like that. They're also very child friendly. And then also you work, you know, you can look at it at your workplace. 
So and there's no controversy with this man. So here it is. This is Jerry Andrus, died in 2007, amazing man. And you will know that one because we're thinking maybe I should be all the things first. I will read this book of music and do it. I promise. This will come out the other way. I have photos. So um, here you go. This is actually a pretty darn good page. We created this a few years ago. Here it is. He made everything. He made that mask and he took the photo. So he set up a tripod. This guy's very eccentric, as you'll see in a moment. Um, <laughs> he only told one lie in his life, and I really do believe that. Um, here he is with David Copperfield. They went to his home in Oregon, which is nowhere near anything. And they sought him out, Penn and Teller, because they wanted to get his, his ideas. This guy's brilliant. He's like the Jonathan Creek. You guys know Jonathan Creek is probably. Jonathan Creek of uh, magic in uh, the United States. This is an impossible box for Penn and Teller. And if you watch the mouse, you'll see that it's really impossible. You see that? So this is an impossible box he built. And it was one of his popular illusions. And uh, I mean, how could it be? So it's an amazing, this is an example of one of his illusions. This guy couldn't walk anywhere without seeing an illusion. Ray Hadden talks about how he, he can find a pattern in the carpet. You know, if you close one eye like this, he's early in this. This is an organ that he had in his home. Oh, God. And this organ had everything hooked up to it. He's not married for the kids, right? They were obviously. So he, he had a treadmill hooked up to it, so if he wanted to walk, uh, do something on the computer, he had to do a treadmill to the it's crazy. Here's this is the nuts and bolts. This is a straight pipe going through there, and it looks like a vent, but they're not. So, and then there's an original photo of him at the Magic Castle, which I liked. And this is a photo I took of him at the uh, Septic Toolbox, which is held in Eugene, Oregon, every year. And I have nice, nice citations, external links. We even took a lot of the videos and translated the videos, um, you know, captioned them in other languages, so people in other languages could go back and they could look at the translations. And, um, this here. So we start translating this page. That was next. So here we have this one's Swedish. This is the Jordan page in Swedish. They just direct translate them over, not the Babel fish or anything, but the native speakers. And this one we're looking at here is Spanish. See, French. I have no French editors anymore. So I really would appreciate having some French editors. Uh, this, oh, this one's French. Uh, this is Dutch. Coming up next. And. Portuguese. You notice that where it's clicking over here on the side, it's written in the language of the language. So that's something that was I wrote to when I started doing this. That it's, it's in here. And here's uh, his Russian page. Awesome. So here's his Russian page. And one last page. I bet you don't know what language this is. Arabic. Isn't that great? Love to write. It's probably the best written page in the Arabic Wikipedia. With all the nice photos, everything cited, great grammar, I guess. So I, have, I don't have any more graphic editors, so I would really like to find some more. So, let me sum this up really quick, which is really odd. We're so far, I'm hoping for lots of questions, okay? So, uh, we are looking for editors, I'm looking for support, and support not financially. I'm looking for people who are willing to come on the team and help us out. It is a training process. It can take weeks or months. Uh, it, can, it can consume your life because it's so awesome. Oh, I was going to show you this. This is uh, Jerry Adams' uh, so sorry, I forgot this. This is his optical illusion, the dragon, that you may have seen because this video went pretty viral about a couple million uh, it's a few weeks ago, and I was wondering why, because the stats, the stats are way up, I can figure it out. And I'm, okay, you guys ready? He's going to reveal the optical illusion. Check it out. It's a piece of paper, just folded a certain way. Look at your eyes and watch this. Amazing, isn't it? I, I just folds it back and unfolds it. And so then I, Bill Clay wrote about um, this dragon. This is a Jerry Andrews dragon. And somebody made it into a T-Rex. And so this started kind of going viral. And people were writing about it and everything. And I was like, what the heck is going on with Jerry Andrews' numbers? 
Yeah, and I do have some brochures too. If there's anybody interested in the Wikipedia projects, these are from Wikimedia, and these are, uh, I only have this many, but please take it because I'm not taking them back to California. Um, there's like, you know, so many pages that give you the details of how to edit Wikipedia, so if anybody's interested, whether you join my team or not, you should have those. Hi. Oh, um, all the edits you do on Wikipedia, they're all um, transparent, they're all out in the open. So I'm just wondering where the name Gorilla comes from. Isn't that great? Yeah, Mark Edward, we, we had, I didn't start this project to be a project. I was just me. You know, Tim Farley gave me the idea, and I started editing Wikipedia, and I was like posting on page. I can't, I just went out to the Walmart page, and I changed that, and they were selling homeopathy. That's really cool, you know. Some people, ooh, that's me. What are you doing? Oh, we're working on now. Oh, I think I'm going to work on this thing. Well, let me look at it, you know. There, so then I turned three people join. And then after a while, it gets to be four or five people. And then, would you like to lecture, Susan, on this at a skeptic camp? I love skeptic camp. We wrote their Wikipedia page and their Portuguese and Spanish page. I believe they have both. We've done the skeptic camp pages on Wikipedia. And so then it just started from there. And then they said, would you like to lecture? I said, I've got to come up with a name. Mark and I were just doing everything we did. Was, uh, we were, it could have been Honey Badger. If it hadn't been uh, all the skeptics, it was going to be Honey Badger. And uh, so we decided that we would do uh, Girl of Skepticism just because I had to come up with a name. I was speaking in town and I needed a name. And I said, well, oh, yeah, we'll just name it Girl of Skepticism on Wikipedia. But I, you know, I, we sound very melodistic, but we're not. Hi. Uh, I suppose we'll caveat on this and say that a PhD student is interested in studying Wikipedia for this part. You're studying Wikipedia? Yes. yes. Uh, so I, I'm quite surprised at what you said about, um, I suppose, uh, having a more form away from Wikipedia that you found that really perhaps stifled um, some of the interactions <coughs> that you've had. And I wonder if there's an inherent um, conflict of interest in that when it comes to how Wikipedia then, I suppose, controls itself and the idea of people having perhaps one reason, reason, well, one reason or another having an agenda. Um, whether you know, it's in your favor or not. Um, and one of the things I thought was kind of side to that is the fact that they're changing now from a neutral point of view to all points of view. And whether or not that's going to become maybe an issue for you. Whether they're not looking towards kind of the balanced idea of the media, of, yeah. you know, they're not going to address that kind of subtlety, that, which is a major conversation about that. Okay, so remind me if I don't have any questions here. So the first one was, about uh, having a forum. We have a secret forum that you can't join. Nobody can go in and read it unless we need a lot of them into our forum. And um, yeah, that sounds really bad because we just, it's my group, I can do what I want. So we have a private group where we can make all of our, our discussions and it's made us liberated because we can have these full cool conversations and we can nitpick and, you know, and just come in and say, hey, I found this. And we, you know, we know each other well. Um, and, you know, it's a lot more fun to be able to do that kind of thing. We have a chat room, we have all sorts of stuff. It's a whole forum that they built for me a little over a year ago. And so far, because of this Rupert Sheldrick thing, that if you attended the other lecture, if you didn't, if you want to know about Rupert Sheldrick and Deepak Chopra and myself and their project, um, because of that, skeptics, uh, that were editors, regular editors of Wikipedia, some, most of the madmen's, came and said, they're like, what is this, you know? And so they started looking into it. We have got a team to help, because my editors only put out the good stuff, and we know that we're being watched. So it, we don't put out crap. We don't put up steps. The page does not go up until it's been done, and it, people have looked at it. And we also don't, um, so to answer your question, we have no, um, nobody's getting into any problems because we're doing everything by the rules. And we're very transparent about it, except for the making of a page. You can't see us writing it out like you would on a normal Wikipedia page. And the other question about the neutral point of view? Richard? Okay, last question, I guess. So, yeah, so we have to have, we try to be as neutral and, 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 and whatever as possible. Yes? I'm always concerned about that thing you don't actually like the way Wikipedia do. Good question. I, as I said, I'm a baby photographer. I have no skills in technology other than what I picked up on the way. I love Wikipedia. I think it is the most amazing invention, better than the large batteries. No, I'm just kidding. I love Wikipedia. I think it's the most brilliant thing in the world. But as 
certain mindset of people tend to edit Wikipedia. They're very detail-oriented. And when you look at some of the pages that are written for the, the they have these groups where people get together and, they, and discuss, oh, if she asks about bias, everybody's got bias. Everybody's got an agenda. The bowling people are writing pages about bowlers. The, the butterfly people are writing pages about butterflies. They're not writing about books or something like that. You all have an agenda because that's your passion. So we've been vetted and nobody's worried about it. They, I love Wikipedia. I just find the written word so dull when it's instructions. I can't follow that. I'm a visual learner. And the instructions that Wikipedia usually have is just like, okay, you know, go here, go there. And they speak in this language that doesn't make sense to me. It's just all these uh, hyperlinks to policies and things. I don't do it that way. I teach people in real language, real words. I explain it to people how to do it, that kind of stuff. So I, I get totally lost, absolutely lost. So Matt, well, let's, I don't know, Okay, we're about out of time. Okay, so please approach me or any of my editors. Um, some of them are wearing shirts, some of them didn't get an order in time. <laughs> please approach us, and I am going to be in Edinburgh for a week. We're going to Middleborough this Monday, and then Edinburgh, and then we're also lecturing in Dundee, and then we're in Sterling. I'm taking my son Sterling to Sterling to see the Sterling Castle, so I'm just super excited about it. And then back to Edinburgh, um, Mark is going to be doing a performance there. So I hope that you'll approach me and look up a set for